You're tuned in to RBLR, the home of Tampa Bay's Reveler Sports. Four seconds left. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to RBLR Lightning. As always, my name is Jake Rick. Alongside me, it's Joe Zamataro. It's Matt Gannon. Guys, welcome back to this show. It is September, and guys, do you know what September means? It means we have lightning hockey this month. We are finally in the month where we get lightning hockey. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. Uh, Joe, I'll start with you. How you doing today? Doing well. I uh, assume you guys ended up being okay for the hurricane that, that came through, right? I'll go here. Everything's good in my world. Yeah, we got uh, pretty lucky in the Tampa Bay area. Glad you guys are, are all are all all right. And, uh, you know, we took a week off because of it. But uh, you know, it just means we're one week closer to, to that start date. Yeah, September is like, you know, December for sports fans. It's like, you know, you're counting down the days till football, till hockey. Um, you know, even basketball, if that's your thing. Um, but football and hockey, that's my thing. So it's like you're just counting down the days till Christmas. Uh, I guess it's really October, but it can't come soon enough for, for hockey here. You know, we're desperate for hockey when we're excited for preseason and, and the training <laughs> camp and all that. We're like, we just need hockey back, man. I, I, that's that's what it is for me. I'm just ready to have it back. Uh, and we're, we're, we're getting close, but uh, we do have some news to talk about, a little stuff to talk about today. We're going to go and we're going to talk about the Lightning hanging out with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers today as well. We're going to have some fun with that and maybe talking about what Lightning players could be playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because there's some good candidates. But don't forget to like and subscribe right here on the YouTube channel. Uh, you can listen at any place you get your podcast. If you're right here on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. You can go back and check out some of our awesome older episodes, too, while you're waiting for some lightning hockey. Don't forget to follow us on social media, at RBLR Sports or at RBLR Lightning, so you don't miss out on all of our future content. All right, let's get right into it. Darren Radish was signed a two-year contract with the Tampa Bay Lightning, and it's only $762,000 cap hit per year, so a nice low cap hit. Uh, but the big factor here, I think, for this contract, guys, is it's a one-way contract. And to me, that says Darren Radish is going to be a consistent defenseman for the Tampa Bay Lightning moving forward. I love this deal for the Bolts. It's a cheap, short deal. Radish was impressive at the end of the season last year, and now we've got another chance to prove it once again here on a cheap contract. Matt, I'll start with you. Your thoughts on the Darren Radish signing? You guys, I've made it pretty clear how I feel about Darren Radish. Um I I like him, but I'm not fully sold on him. I have my issues with him. But I think at a cheap deal like this, it doesn't hurt. It really doesn't. Not one bit. But, again, I'm still not fully sold on him. Um, but, you know, with, you know, when you're crunching money kind of like the Lightning are, we have depth on D now. Um, I'm still not sure whether he makes the opening, light, opening night lineup or anything. But, again, a deal like this does not hurt whatsoever. It's defensive depth. We know what he can do. And it still looks like he does have some room to grow. So hope, I'd like to see him in some games this coming year. Maybe not every game, but hopefully, again, like me, I'm a doubter. Hopefully he can prove me wrong. Yeah, and I think you used the key word that uh, is all about the sign, which is depth. It's a depth piece. Uh, I don't know the last time that we had a uh, season where – uh, we didn't have a defenseman go down for, you know, at least, uh, I'd say, I'd say cumulatively, we we must have at least about 80 games uh, a season worth of downtime uh, for all of our defensemen um, together. So Radish, you know, starts stepping it up. He's a player that can, that can get in there. You can tell by the uh, term of the contract that, um, you know, he's being given a chance. You can tell by the amount of the contract that he's not expected to be, uh, you know, one of the bottom four guys. So let's you know see what uh, what he can do. I'm I'm glad to be able to see more of him. 
Someone made a comment, I think it was on, on Facebook, and they said that the Lightning defense gets really thin when they lose guys like Hedman or Chernak, which they're not completely wrong about. I mean, after we've lost guys like Ryan McDonough, for example, uh, you know, the defense isn't what it used to be. But, you know, I think Radish, with the right development, if he keeps doing what he's been doing, can be a solid piece for the Lightning moving forward. I think Calvin uh, – is it? I might butcher this, hopefully not. Calvin, Calvin DeHaan, he, he's uh-huh. another guy, too. Uh, that I think could be a, a big piece for the Lightning on defense moving forward. It's just one of those defensive defensemen. You know, you don't need the goals every time. Because, listen, if Radish doesn't score, you know, however many got of goals, it, it's not going to bother me. I, I, the defense is the more important part, I think, of this. Yeah, I, I think um, Dehan is going to be the guy to get the nod come night one. Of course, uh, training camp and preseason are going to be – uh, good indicators, maybe a good way to predict who does get that opening night nod. But personally, right now, you have to go with Pedigree Dahan. He's not a superstar name or anything. He's another depth signing, but he is a veteran. He's a guy that's proved he's a steady, stable defenseman back there. And right now, that's kind of what we need. We've got the workhorses uh, up front on the D core with Hedman and Sergachev. And even, you know, Chernak has a little bit of a tiny little bit of offense to his game. But those are the the three big guys on defense. We're going to need a steady defensive force back there. And, you know, Radish, he's kind of more the offensive side. He's willing to move the puck up and skate the puck deep into the zone. Again, time will tell what we do need, but I do think DeHaan is going to be the guy to get the uh, opening night nod. Well, I mean, DeHaan's really, he's pretty much the Ian Cole replacement, uh, the person that you slot into that spot since uh, Cole went to Vancouver. Um, So, I mean, I think it'll be a good fit for... uh, you know, for, for getting him into that defensive role for sure. I can't remember exactly where Ian Cole went, but you're absolutely Thank right. You. He, he's going to be the, the replacement for him. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning have been doing some fun things over the offseason. Uh, they've been going around interviewing different types of players in their hometowns, as we talked about in one of the earlier episodes. Uh, and recently, the Tampa Bay Lightning were at the – Bucks, one of the Bucks preseason practices. Uh, not all of the light members of the Lightning, but a few of them, including uh, Stamkos, Hedman, Sorelli was there. I'm trying to think of the other player, uh, Hagel, I believe, was there as well. Isimont uh, e- e- as well, and they were all having fun at the Bucks practice. And guys, there were a couple of players uh, that were impressive when they took part in some of the Bucks drills. Uh, you had Victor Hedman, who booted an absolute huge feel i think it was a near 50 yard field goal and got it through the uprights which is no easy task uh but victor hedman showing off the leg i know some people are saying he's losing a step a little bit i think he's gaining a step <laughs> <laughs> i mean if, if you look at that shot i mean they, they they lined him up for a 50 and he didn't even follow through he it almost looked like he kind of uh you know choked up on it if you will with, with that kick you know he looked like he had more leg to go if he if he really wanted to it was, it was definitely impressive you can tell you know somebody's uh, a soccer or a european football fan for sure i don't care what his form looked like man give that guy a contract right now we could, we could <laughs> wait, use a backup wait, kicker. wait. Uh, yeah 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 <laughs> but no he, he he that was impressive i saw one dude in the comments somewhere saying you know, NFL players do this with like a 98% accuracy or whatever. I'm like, dude, this is a guy that just, uh, he's an NHL <laughs> player. Like just give credit where it's due. It's a 50 yard field goal. I wouldn't be able to do it in a thousand tries. Like it's just flat out impressive. He's able to do that whatsoever. It just goes to show you how strong those defensemen's legs are. I mean, you know, cause you know, you don't use, well, I don't say you don't use your legs, but you know, it's not the main, but you're skating, you're skating on ice. You have to have strong legs. And it just goes to show you how good Hedman is. He would have kicked that far of a field goal. Uh, but Hedman wasn't the only one that was impressing out there at the Bucks practice. You had Steven Stamkos, who caught five balls all at the same time. Uh, I don't know if it was like a, a punt return challenge. I think it was the, they're basically punting the ball in the air. And Stamkos won, and he caught another one, all while holding him at the same time. And he got all the way up to five, uh, which is pretty darn impressive because I'm going to be honest. I don't think I could even catch one. So to catch five all at the same time and holding all those balls, I think is pretty darn good. So the Lightning have a couple of uh, uh, two two sport athletes, if you will. Well, I mean, for Stamkos, he's even more impressive when he's playing baseball. So maybe he's a a three sport athlete three sport out athlete. there. If you see him when he when he goes out with the Rays and and uh, starts hitting some dingers over the wall. 
this this is a bit of a uh, maybe not a controversial opinion, but I, I do firmly believe, kind of going back to what we were saying about Hedman, but hockey players are definitely the most versatile athletes. Um, you know, you, to to play the game of ice hockey, it takes you know the best parts of each other you know team sport you can get. Now I'm not trying to talk down on them or anything, but I think it takes a special kind of human to be able to take all those special things from all these sports. And they kind of all come together on the ice, on skates, with a bat in your hand, on knife shoes. Like, they're just the most versatile athletes. When you reverse the positions, and I know it's not a fair argument, but you ask an NFL player to go like lace up some skates and go score a goal versus, you know, asking a ice hockey defenseman to put the cleats on and kick a 50-yard field goal. Um, I think it's easier for the hockey players than it would be for the football player to do so. So it was that Gronk that did that a few years ago, put oh, on yeah. Bassie's pads and uh, and hit he the did. ice. You know, if you guys, uh, I'm not trying to stir up anything controversial. If you consider golf a sport, then, you know, a lot of these guys really have, uh, you know, multiple uh, different uh, professional things they could probably get to. I think Kalorn was something like a, a par golfer, if I remember correctly. I mean, he was he was really good at it. Oh, yeah, that's like uh, hockey players, like biggest pastime is golf. And I think it's just kind of, natural to them um you know just considering you with how you know taking a hockey shot <clears throat> kind of is semi-similar i know <laughs> i know but it's similar no i'm not disagreeing that it's just like i have the most trouble playing golf because um playing ice hockey you, you constantly want to have your head up and that's my biggest problem when i hit a golf ball i keep my head up you know I, I, and i and end up you know hitting it funny and then when i start getting the you know on the driving range i start getting a few that are going you know going pretty well next time i'm on the ice my head's down <laughs> the, in, the entire time it does not translate well for me i'm so glad you said that joe because i do the same thing and i don't even really play hockey regularly but you know because i just you know, even on the street just shooting pucks around in the net and that natural motion of you know even pulling your body you want to do the same thing with the golf club and so i pull balls yeah. all the time if i try to hit one uh but it is funny because you mentioned it matt hockey is very compatible not compatible but you know uh put together with golf because you know like when teams get eliminated from the playoffs the first thing people say is like oh they're going to the golf course like it's it's very hand in hand actually the boat reporter got a chance to interview isaac howard today and we talked to him about his golf game because he said he loves going out to top golf and playing some golf so it, it's it's nothing new and it's something that's not changing uh and, and it's crazy that golf is that close with hockey even though it feels really weird because the swing's don't quite match. Maybe, maybe it's just because we're not that good show. Maybe it's is, the, the pro players know how to do it, right? Is that a uh, thing in other sports? Because, like, you know, in hockey, you get eliminated from the playoffs. Like you're saying, oh, they're going to have fun uh, on the golf course. Is that a thing in other sports? You I, get eliminated you know, in baseball. You're like, oh, they're going to, you know, go skiing. They're going to go hit the slopes. I've never heard <laughs> that, you know. I don't think it is for any other sport. I've never heard anything quite like it is for, for hockey and golf. I can't think of any of it. So they are kind of attached at the hip there. They, they they really are. All right, I want to go back to the the Bucks in the Lightning because I thought since we saw all the Lightning players out there at the Bucks practice having fun uh, and talking with Mike Evans, I thought it would be fun to kind of look at the Lightning players in their roster and try and figure out where you think players could fit on a Bucks roster. So, like for example, would put Victor Hedman if he was going to play football uh and kicker is probably one of the obvious ones but like who, who are we going with the receivers who are you putting on defense let's try and figure out if we can make a little bucks lightning roster let's start with the the biggest position which is quarterback now when the, the lightning were at the bucks practice uh it was sorelli was the one that was throwing some touchdown passes out there and he, he, he did look pretty good but i gotta be honest sorelli's not who i think i would pick first for the quarterback. So, Matt, I'll let you start it off. What lightning player are you going with for the quarterback position? I'm, I'm going to try to ignore all the footage that I did see and just try to do this completely blind in the dark of who I just think would be the best. And so for the quarterback position, I'm going to go with a guy who's actually semi-familiar with it, at least a namesake, is a guy who took the mantle this year as the power play one specialist, Mikhail Sergachev. On that uh, first power play, what do they call the uh, the defenseman with the puck, the quarterback? I feel like he's you know a big enough guy that he can see over the crowd. He's got a good arm, and wh what do we know Sergey best for? He's got a wicked laser of a wrist shot. 
that is accurate. It's deadly accurate with like some it. speed. What do you want in a quarterback? Deadly accurate with a good, powerful throw. That's my choice is Mikhail Sergachev at QB1. No, I mean, there's you, you have a, a lot of, of merit to that. Um, I, I, I like what you're thinking there. I'm going to go with a, you know, kind of a similar route, and that's uh, haven't seen him throw a football, but Kucherov, because, you know, if anybody's got vision all over the uh, all over the ice, hopefully it helped down the field and uh, get some get some passes off and make some connections. Joe, you stole mine. That's what I was going to say, Kucherov, because of his hockey IQ, and the the quarterback needs to have a great IQ. So I think he'd be a perfect fit in there, and he's got a laser. Uh, for himself. Another guy I think you could throw in there is Steven Stamkos. And just because he's the captain of the team, usually the quarterback is one of the the highest, most important positions on a football team. So it doesn't hurt to ever throw the captain to lead the team in there. So I think some good picks. Uh, there's a lot of guys that I think you, you could throw in there. Uh, let's go. Let's do receivers. I think receivers is, is a fun one because you're looking for, you're looking for speed. You're looking for maybe being a, a taller guy. Uh, Joe, I'll start with you this time. Who are you picking for your receivers? Well, so I think that uh, the first one would probably have to be Nick Paul. Um, you know, I was kind of debating if I was going to put him there or as a tight end type. Um, I think there might be another player that will, will that I'll, I'll hold off for that position. And then also somebody that has some decent foot speed at defense, uh, Hayden Fleury, 6'4". I mean, he's uh, he's somebody that, that could probably get some ups, I, I feel, and uh, snag some balls out of the air. I think I'm going to go with a maybe a bit of a hot take here, but Brandon Hagel. I want somebody, like you were saying, with speed, somebody who's tenacious, and somebody who can kind of, you know, turn on a dime kind of like that. And I think we, you know, <clears throat> we know what Brandon Hagel's game is like. I think it might translate well to a uh, receiving game. I like that pick, Matt, because that's what I was kind of thinking similar to. I think Brandon Hagel, I think he's a good, like, slot receiver. You know, mm-hmm. just mix it in there. He's got that little bit of speed, and he can help out a ton. Uh, as for who your number one receiver might be, uh, Joe, I liked your pick for Paul. I think he might be a little bit better at, at, at tight end. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's not any super tall guys that I can think of at the top of my head. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with – Andre Vasilevsky at wide receiver. Ooh, I think Vasilevsky nice. is he's a very flexible, quick moving kind of guy. He can get up there for those for those tough to catch balls. I think I like Andre Vasilevsky. That's a, a fantastic receiver. pick. I don't he's know why. He's six four. Yeah. He's yeah. A tall guy, good flexibility, and I'm sure he's got a little bit of speed. Obviously, we don't get to see it that much since he's staying in one spot the whole time when it comes to the ice. But I, I think Vasilevsky could do some damage there. All right. Well, Joe, Joe I'm curious. About your tight end pick, because you, you kind of teased it there. So let's go well, to tight end. Who, who so you got for t- tight end? Tight end's an interesting position because you really have to also make sure that you're a good blocker. And I think somebody that would be pretty hard nosed and, and tough to compete against would be Tanner Janot. I think Ooh. he's perfect for tight end. That's not a bad one. I didn't even really think about that. That might be the <laughs> way to go. But uh, of course, um, for, for all pretty much the same reasons. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, with Bogo. You can never go wrong with Zach Bogosian, it, no matter what the situation is. He's the best. Um, but for a tight end position, you know, you want a big body like that. Uh, you know, maybe his movement might might not be the best, but he's a big, imposing frame. I think I'll go with him at, at the tight end position. I would have loved to have Pat Maroon still on the mm. team because he would have been a great a great <laughs> tight end pick. The only other position you might say he'd be better at is is on defense, but unfortunately he he is not on the team anymore. I'm going to go with one of the newcomers. I'm going to go with Luke Glenn Denning. I think he could be a solid uh, tight end. Just you know, kind of a physical. De- you know, he's not known for his flashiness, not known for his goal scoring, but. He's a, a solid athlete that can get the job done, and sometimes that's what you need in a, in a blocking tight end. He may not be the Travis Kelsey uh, of, of the NFL, but I think he could be a solid pick there. All right, All let's right, go it. to let's go to running back because I think I think there's an obvious pick here at, at, at running back. We could almost say it in unison, right? <laughs> Let, <laughs> let's do it. All right, I'm I'll, I'll count us down. We'll do it on one, three, two, one. Braden Point. Braden Point. Matt, who are you going with? Because you didn't say anything. 
I was going to say Mikey Asamont. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the, you know that's a great pick too. I mean, he's like a mini Braden Point, maybe like, a little bit uh, more gritty, so he could he could take the hit in the hole that much better. The first thing that popped into my head was uh, for when I thought of running back, I was like, oh, Yanni Gore, but I'm like, oh wait, he's like three years removed. So <laughs> um, who's like the next closest guy to Yanni Gore? Oh, it's Mikey Asamont. He's just you know a, a shadow of him. So I was like, you know, he's slippery. He's, you know, he's uh, he's a grinder and he's quick. He is fast. So that's, again, you know, exactly what you're looking for in a running back. But I think I like your guys' answers a little bit better. I don't know why I was so lost on that <laughs> one. I was like, who are they talking about? All three of us know? Braden Point just has that <laughs> speed, man. You know, and when you think of great running backs, they usually have, although there's a lot of new running backs in the NFL nowadays that are big, you know, tough you know, a mm-hmm. couple ground and pound guys, but Braden Point, I think, could be a great back for sure. All right, so let's go to kicker. Are we sticking with Victor Hedman because we saw him kick a 50 yard field goal, or is there anybody else that you like? I'm, I think I got to stick with Victor Hedman because he kicked a 50 yard field goal. I think he earned the spot. Just to be a little different, I'm going to go with Vasilevsky. Uh, similar, you know, similar builds, I guess. You know, he's he's tall, lanky. He'll get a lot. You know, Vasilevsky's legs have got to be, you know, maybe not as powerful as Hedman's, but he's got a lot of movement in him. He might have a little bit better form, I'll say, with them. Um, so I, I guess just for, for difference sake, I'll go with Vasilevsky. All right, this is probably the tougher part of this, and we're going to go defense. We're not going to go through every position, but we'll just kind of uh, jumble the defense together. Who are a couple of guys that you're picking for the defensive side of the ball? Uh, Matt, I'll start with you. What you got? Oh, God. Um, No, come back to me. All right, free safety, Sorelli. I like the way he plays oh. defensively, how he can he can read offenses, and he's got some speed and ability to uh, close some gaps on guys. I think he'd be perfect as a free safety. That's a good answer. Jake? Uh, Joe said this one for tight end, which I do like, but Tanner Janot. I think Tanner Janot could be a great middle linebacker or even defensive line. Big, tough, gritty guy can get through that offensive line and get to the quarterback. I like Tanner Janot. There's only one brick wall on the team, which is Vasilevsky, but – the second best thing you're going to get is Tanner, or not Tanner Janot, Eric Chernak. He, he's darn near Ooh. brick wall. So I, I guess I'd have him as like a lineman or something. I mean, imagine moving him. It's just not happening. Uh, I, that's that's a good one as well, Eric, Eric Chernak. Uh, there, there's a, I think a lot of the defensive guys would probably – is that how that would work? Is did a lot of defensive players translate to the defensive side of the football and the offensive players translate to the offensive side of the ball? I'll go for it. <laughs> I, I think I because I kind of feel part that that it would I I, I kind of see that 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 working out but hey we'd love to know from our listeners here at home too. let us know what you guys think who are you putting at quarterback do you agree with us do you disagree with us we'd love to know your teams as well you can tweet us at RBR lightning uh, to get into it so so there we go all right I think it's a pretty good lineup that we've got there for any the- uh any Bucks players you think uh, would be good fits uh, on the Lightning? That's a good question. <laughs> I mean, I, I, to, in, in an effort to save time, maybe like, you know, a forward defenseman goalie. All right, forward defenseman goalie. I literally have nothing to contribute on this one at all. <laughs> I can't even think of anybody that would have uh, the ability to, to do that. We'd probably have to say Mike Evans for forward, right? Yeah. Got that that's speed. What, that's what I would go. He's probably he's got big. a good shot. Mm-hmm. I, I think he's he's a very well-rounded athlete. That that was going to be my pick for for forward. He's a big power forward. Uh, he's, Mike, he's like Mike big. Evans. Yeah, Mike I would Evans say he, he might he slot into like two, like a the headman spot. Oh yeah, like a quarterback on the power play kind of guy, just a steady defensive force. Uh, right, but then I can also have some offensive upside. You know, mm-hmm. use his size to his advantage when it uh, comes to defending, and then uh, still turn it up the up the ice. I was just thinking about how offensive of, of a player he was, how great and dominant mm-hmm. he can be uh, as a uh, receiver. I think it would probably, you know, in in this hypothetical world we're living in, would translate well onto the ice for Evans. Well, Matt, who do you got for for goalie? Because I have someone in mind. I'm curious to see who you would have. Vita Vea. That is exactly what I was no thinking. Way. We went the same way. <laughs> hey, listen, he's an athletic guy. He's a big guy. I think he could make some great plays in net at stopping some pucks. <laughs> That's funny, man. I was like, I, I, I thought that was just kind of a out there take. I had no idea. That's who you were 
even zeroing in on. <laughs> All right, well, our producer Eureka just said a couple of players too here. So let's see. he said Mike Evans for forward, Devin White as the Ooh. winger slash defensive forward, and Levante David for the defenseman. Uh, that's that's a that great, is the best. A great pick right there. Funny enough, I was uh, actually thinking of uh, Levante David would be a, a a pretty good forward. Oddly yeah. enough. Hey, he he's another guy that could probably play either one of those positions. There's definitely a few players that could fit in almost, almost anywhere. He also said uh, uh, Vita Vea, by the way, for for goaltender as well. So we're all on the all on the same page on that one as well. Uh, before we wrap up this episode, I've got an interesting thing I want to bring up here because it's one of the most common things I see posted by fans, and it's where can I watch the Lightning in? Any year, insert year, because it's always changing. So I thought just for this last little little bit here of the show, I'll ask you guys, how do you watch the Lightning? So maybe some people out there can get an idea how they can watch the Bulls for this upcoming season. I'm not one to, you know, condone this type of behavior. But for the longest time, I was just doing, you know, illegal stream sites. But there's a lot of, you know, bad things there that you can get with them. And they're just unreliable. I don't care whatever virus I can get, but they're just unreliable. Sometimes you wouldn't get the first oh, 10, 10 minutes of a game. I know, right? My illegal stream's not working. <laughs> what the heck? Um, so I finally did cave, and I did get the uh, the Bally Sports app. So um, I guess that's what I You gave that's what money? I, I know, I know. I'm just kind of waiting for the uh, the whoever their parent company is to go bankrupt and Lightning just do their own streaming service. I would say the the the, the passion to be able to watch the Bolts far exceeds the disdain for Bally Sports. So that's the same route that I go for uh, for this past season. But before, you know, like I don't, I don't, I cut the cord for standard cable more than ten years ago, and have just been using streaming services. Um, but none of them really had a good option for some sports before. I mean, you, they just, they'd say that they'd have it, but, uh, you, you know, you'd start talking to them. They didn't have anything local. So it's definitely nice to have ballets because I was having to basically use streams or, uh, or actually go to a game. Going to the game is obviously the best way to yeah. do it and the most exciting way to do it. Um, I used to have direct TV, which where I would watch them. Now I have recently switched to YouTube TV. Of course, they don't have Bally, so I actually do have the Bally app myself as well oh. now because I had to switch. I was making funny of for it. But um, <laughs> it's Spectrum, direct TV, and Fubo are the ones that have a deal with Bally. So that's the one way you can watch Bally. Um, and of course, obviously, there's the. Uh, the pirate stream that you can go check out as well if you know, if you know where to find and make a deal with the with the pop up ads. You know, I used I used to a long time ago have the NHL Network. I forget what it's called, Center Ice. Um, NHL Center and Ice. I, and then proxy my way to get out of outside the you know uh, local. So you don't get house. blacked out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, you're still at least trying to do it the legitimate way uh, of paying for your service. You're just kind of lying about your locale. The, it's just you know the gray area. You're not you're not doing. You're not hurting too anybody. Bad. Yeah, <laughs> right. No. The the dream for me, and this is never going to happen at least soon, uh, is for the the Apple TV has a great deal with the MLS where you pay set amount, watch any game you want, anytime, and there's no blackouts, no nothing. It's it's fantastic, and I would love to have that for for the Lightning as well, or for the NHL as well, because I would. Absolutely, pay it, no problem. Pr- probably not my dream way to do it. I know we have essentially gone from cable to getting rid of cable to now with every single new subscription, you're paying the same, if not more. I think when the teams just straight up own the rights to their own broadcasts, I think there is a uh, Major League Baseball team that that went and are they're doing their own streams. I wish Lightning would do that. Just keep it simple. Nobody cares about like where you're located. Just pay X amount of money a month and, and, and watch our games. I think that's fair. Probably the best way to do it. And maybe, you know, 70 something games. What? I feel like I'm being judged. That that no, you're right. That would that would be okay. the ultimate dream, but unfortunately, I don't know if we're ever gonna get that. Well, I'll tell you one place you can always get lightning coverage is right here on RBLR Lightning. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future episodes. Another place you can support your team no matter what is heading over to shop.rblrsports.com. And we've got an exclusive code just for you guys. You can use code BOLTS to get 10% off your order. And it's not just lightning merch that we got over there. Uh 
Rays, Rowdies, Bucks, Lightning-inspired merch. So be sure to go over there and check it out on shop.rblrsports.com. Links, as always, are in the description, so be sure to go check those out over there. Go get a uh, Headman Bucks jersey. I was just thinking <laughs> that, like, how funny would it be to have a Headman, you know, it just says underneath them, like, the kicker. <laughs> that would be great. Maybe we'll, if there's some it's NHLPA, it's uh, holding us down there. We can't create anything like that. Maybe we'll have to come up with something something similar, Maybe a little silhouette of uh, and just write the kicker on it, 50 yard field goal. <laughs> uh, but yeah, all right. So that that's going to do it for us in this episode, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are just a couple of weeks away from Lightning Hockey. We're getting there. Hang on just a little bit longer. Don't forget to follow us at RBLR Sports or at RBR Lightning. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We'll talk to you guys next time. Go Bolts! Thank you for tuning into this presentation by RBLR Sports. On your way out of the stadium, please remember to like and subscribe.